Welcome to Land a House. I'm Seth. I'm here on a property to install a half inch ram pump. I'm actually installing this for the third time. Hurricane Helene washed out the pump and the previous time it had some uh, issues going on. So third time's the charm is my hope. This pump is going to be bringing water up to a tiny house to be used for a shower and sink. So if you're interested in checking out a ram pump install, then continue watching. If you've never heard of a ram pump, it's a water pump that does not need fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. Water comes down a pipe, as you see on this side, activates a waste valve, which sends a pressure wave into the second valve, builds pressure in this tank, and then sends water uphill on a ratio of one to seven. This is the head of the spring, and that's where the supply pipe has the screened intake to go down to my bucket. So as you can see, the water is nice and clear, and it's about uh, two foot deep right there. And then I have the supply pipe, which is a half inch poly pipe, and it is traveling along here. And it's gonna go a couple hundred feet down the creek and uh, go down to my uh, bucket. So let's go ahead and uh, hike this so you can see what it looks like here. So there is still overflow on my spring, which is good news the uh, ram pump is not going to be consuming everything so all right it's a little bit treacherous here let me go down without you before the hurricane flooded this area the old ram pump source was right here in this pool as you can see things have changed a lot since then the water was up about uh this high right here so that's about five to six foot uh higher than where it currently is it also washed out the culvert, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, but this is where the supply pipe is going. It goes under this uh, bunch of debris, and uh, I'll have to uh, go around so you can see what it looks like over there. This culvert used to be 75 feet long. I know that it was 75 feet because I stuck a pipe in there previously, and that's how long it was. So uh, right over past that tree, is where the old pipe ended and uh, at the other side of this there was uh, the pipe so right in there uh, so all of that got washed out in the hurricane but as you can see my pipe is right down in there making its way on down this way i don't know how well it's going to show up but you can kind of see it snaking along there so uh let's go down there real quick i'm going to clip in a video from before this uh, flood happened so you can see what it looked like drastic changes huh all right, so the supply pipe is now heading down this way. And as you can see, it is no longer in the creek like it used to be, um, but it is out here on the bank. And it actually is about to head off over in that direction. And so let me uh, walk around and I'll show you the filter bucket. And after a couple hundred feet, this half inch poly pipe swings up around and goes into the top of this filter bucket. Essentially, this will take out any air that gets in the line. Those bubbles will raise up and go out these holes on the top. And also, any silt that gets into the system will settle down here in the lower half of this filter bucket. And that is going to be huge for running the ram pump. Now, this is called the supply pipe, which comes from the source to this bucket. And then from here is the drive pipe. And that is going to head down there about 30 feet to the ram pump. One thing to note when running the ram pump from one of these buckets, you've got to have overflow, so there's plenty of extra water. So as you can see, I've got uh, lots of water overflowing this bucket while the ram pump is in operation. So the drive pipe is approximately 30 feet long, travels down over here, and I'm not, I've not been up to the top yet to see if I have output yet, but the pump is uh, cycling right down here. So water is coming down the drive pipe, closing this waste valve, and that sends a pressure wave into the secondary valve, builds pressure in this tank, and then sends water uphill on this delivery pipe. Now this pipe is going all the way uphill to an IBC tote where the water is being stored. So let's travel up there and see if the water has made it to the top. This is the IBC tote that's gonna be filled up by the ram pump. If I tap the line, I can tell that it's empty here. However, if I move down a little bit, so it's still empty there. I was filling right over here, 
and it was full. All right, so it's about right here, moving its way up from all the way down there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear the difference, but it's full here and it's empty there. So the water has reached here. We are almost to the tank. Now, if you'll notice, I'm using a three quarter inch delivery pipe. A half inch would have allowed this to fill up a lot faster. Um, it doesn't really matter. The uh, pressure is still the same. Um, it's just uh, cheaper to use half inch and it fills up faster as well. The IBC tote is 275 gallons and it actually runs under the ground here and goes to this tiny house which goes to a shower and some uh, a sink inside. But uh, the water from the ram pump has reached up here now. Let's see if I can give you. So it doesn't look like much and there actually is a way to get more water out of this pump. I would need to drop the pump down the hill a little further to get more head pressure. But uh, for now, this is sufficient. So uh, that right there will supply um, probably over 100 gallons in a day. So it'll take a couple days for this tank to fully fill to the top. Um, but uh, for now, that is good enough. We'll go ahead and close this up. And uh, just for fun, let me show you the rest of the system here. I have a T coming off of this, and it goes to a standpipe. So this is where the water will overflow when the tank is full. The reason I've cut it off a little bit lower is because the tank that is over here inside of this little watershed will be full right to the brim whenever that overflows. So open this all the way up for you. So there is a 55 gallon drum in here that's connected to that outdoor barrel. And then there's a hot water over here and also a water filter. And uh, this can be isolated from the outdoor unit for winter time um, by disconnecting uh, union and ball, uh, close the ball valve there. Diaphragm pump uh, is what pressurizes the water. And then also we've got a little light for some heat here in the winter time. So uh, that right there goes to uh, both an outdoor shower, which is right over here and then the plumbing that is inside. This is the third time that I've installed this ram pump to bring water to a tiny house. I hope you found the install helpful. Even though I didn't go step by step showing you how to install it, you can at least just see what it looks like whenever it's done. I have four different sizes of ram pump available on my website and on eBay and Amazon as well. I'll have links to those in the description down below. I'm Seth with Landa House and I will see you in the next video. Bye.